Hello everyone, hope you are having a fantastic day so far. Welcome back to another video. This is going to be the fifth episode of ranking every single epic champion in the game. Today we're moving on to the Augurn Tribes faction. Real quick, if you're liking the videos, I have a Discord link down in the description below. Make sure to hop into the Discord so that we can share some raid content, video ideas, all that sort of good stuff in the Discord. Uh, it's not too, too popular at the moment, but I'd love to get more folks in there chattering away, especially about this game or any other games we might play. I have like 500 plus games in my Steam library, so I'm sure there's going to be some overlap there. Make sure to check it out. We're going to hop right into it, though, and start off with Grimskin. Uh, I do have my tier maker list over here, of course. Grimskin uh, had a bit of an oil spill, it looks like. He attacks one enemy, 50% chance of placing the big version of decreased speed. Decent skill there, damage based on defense, of course. Attacks one enemy two times, each hit has a 70% chance of placing a provoke. Has a 60% chance of placing a provoke on all enemies for one turn if the first provoke is placed. A lot of chances happening there, almost no guaranteed provokes, almost no utility if there's no provokes out there, right? So not that good. Attacks all enemies, 100% chance of removing one random buff from each target. So, Grimskin, where are we going to put him? I also have my rankings over on my phone here on the side, so if you see me looking at stuff, that is why. Uh, Grimskin is going to be this fella right here, and I'm going to go ahead and put him into the C tier. Uh, overall, just not too special in terms of champions in the game. Uh, could possibly do some damage, some utility for you, but he's not going to do too, anything too, too crazy apart from that. This is Ugo, who is actually going to be the gal in the thumbnail of this video. So if you clicked on the video, there's a good chance that it was for her, of course. Um, attacks one enemy has a 35% chance of placing a leech debuff for two turns. The chance increases by 5% for each alive enemy. Pretty good, especially if you think of Spider. Attacks all enemy, 100% chance of placing a decreased defense. Also has a 75% chance of placing a block buffs. The chance of placing that goes up by 5% for each alive enemy. Again, good for Spider, good for Hydra, places like that. She then removes all heal reduction debuffs from all allies, then removes one random debuff, then heals by 20% of her max HP. Very good max HP on her as well. If all allies are dead, revives them with 50% HP, then fills their turn meters by 50% instead on a 4 turn cooldown. And her passive, she's placing an increased speed and a block damage on herself for one turn whenever her last living ally is killed. Overall, for anyone who knows anything about this game, you can probably tell just how good of a champion this is. Uh, so let me bring my tier list over here. Let's go ahead and find Ugo, who's hiding down here. This champion is absolutely going to sit in the S tier. For anyone who might be stopping by my tier list here for the first time, champions that are just kind of grayed out like this basically mean I don't have them. We're also ranking all champions as if we're ranking all epics in the game, not just within their own faction. So something that's like in a B tier on this list might be in an S tier if you're looking at faction wars only or secret rooms or something like that. So just take it with a grain of salt. We have... Claude Beast Feeder. He has an attack one enemy, 50% chance of placing a decreased crit rate for two turns. This is basically going to mean that in PvP you don't get crit by whatever enemy that's on. He places a shield on all allies equal to 20% of his max HP for two turns on a three turn cooldown. Very, very good base HP there from him. And he places an increased speed and increased accuracy on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown. He heals everyone by the uh, he heals the ally with the lowest HP by 10% of their max HP at the start of his turn. So very similar to something like a Doom Priest or a Sill, except they do it on an AOE. He does it on a single target. Still a very very decent champion though. So Claude is actually one of the few champions that I have built out. Uh, he is going into the A tier. He helped carry me through some of the secret rooms and helped me get to my ramen too. We have Siege Hulk. Siege Hulk is going to attack one enemy, decreasing the turn meter by 15% if they're under a decreased defense or decreased speed. He places an increased attack on himself, then attacks everybody, has a 100% chance of placing the big version of decreased defense. On a three turn cooldown, a lot of damage coming out of this guy as well, placing a crit rate buff and a crit damage buff on himself for two turns, then attacks one enemy, 100% chance of placing the big version of decrease speed, which is fantastic, crit rate and doom tower battles, not really going to use him for that I wouldn't think. Overall, uh, Siege Hulk is actually going to make his way up a little higher than some people might expect. And he's going to sit inside the B tier. Uh, so Siege Hulk is a very good champion. He does good damage. Uh, and he also has good support and everything like that, right? So, well, not really good support, but I meant debuffs. <laughs> he debuffs, he does good damage. He can do a two for one there. 
Lorne the Cutter. He attacks one enemy three times, healing himself by 15% of the damage inflicted. Attacking all enemies, heal reduction, and a leech for two turns. Attacking one enemy, 100% chance of decreasing the turn meter by 100% on a four turn cooldown. Overall, just not too, too impressed with this champion. Because of that, I am actually going to go ahead and place him into the C tier. You can get some utility out of him in somewhere like uh, Dark Fae, maybe, or somewhere like, uh, you know, Fire Knight. But overall, you're going to have better champions for that particular role. Next up, we have Skull Crusher, who is kind of pretty famous in the game at this point. Attacks one enemy, placing a 50% heal reduction debuff if the target defense is lower than this champion's. He places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except himself. Then he places a counterattack on everybody except himself. And he places an unkillable on himself for one turn. He also decreases the duration of all debuffs on himself by one turn at the start of each turn. So if he's stunned or any other sort of CC, he's going to go ahead and essentially just cleanse that. Uh, Skull Crusher, to no one's surprise, I'm sure he's going to go ahead and sit right into the S tier. The fact that there's only like three counterattack champions in this game, like AoE counterattack, and the fact that he does it and he's an epic, that is insane, worthy of the S tier right there. We have Shatterbones, he's attacking one enemy, placing the small version of increase attack on all allies for one turn if it's critical. Interesting skill. Attacks all enemies three times, has a 75% chance of decreasing the turn meter by 30%, and he places a 15% decrease speed on all enemies for two turns and fills the turn meter of all allies by 25%, which is a fairly large fill as these things go. Uh, he then also has an accuracy in arena battles. Interesting champion. Uh, Shatterbones is right here. And he's going to go ahead and rank into the B tier. Uh, he is a bit of a damage dealer, but he also brings really good support to back it up. We have Grunch Killjoy, the Grinch himself here. He's going to attack one enemy. He reads a small library to get his kit built out, by the way. So he attacks one enemy, has a 65% chance of placing a block bust for one turn. Kind of a terrible A1, in all honesty. Attacks all enemies, 70% uh, chance of placing a bomb that detonates after one turn. And removes all debuffs, then places one continuous heal for every debuff removed. Uh, and then he fills the turn meters of all allies by 10% whenever a bomb debuff detonates. So, overall, kind of meh in all honesty. Um, you might get some utility out of him, and again, like a place like Faction Wars or something like that. Whereas he, Grunch is overall going to go ahead and sit in the C tier, which is quite a quite a quite a, a, a burn against him considering that you know support champions are usually just defaulting into the B tier so he absolutely deserves it though not that good of a champion we have C's he attacks one enemy placing an increased attack on himself if the attack is critical he attacks one enemy three times filling the turn meter by 10% on each critical hit and he's also placing a perfect veil on himself for one turn on a three turn cooldown and he attacks all enemies, placing the big version of increased crit damage on himself for two turns before attacking. He then heals himself by 5% of his HP on each critical hit. And he steals 15% of the turn meter from the enemy with the highest turn meter at the end of his turn. And it cannot be resisted. So this guy is not placing debuffs. You can just straight up build him out with as much damage as you want. Good base stats. This guy is fantastic. I think he was a daily login that people got upset about as well. Uh, so C's. He's actually going to go all the way up and sit inside the B tier. It's very rare that damage dealers would get up in this area, so I think C sitting in the B tier is definitely a good spot for him. Next up, we have Gruckus. Gruckus is going to attack one enemy three times. He is going to have a 20% chance on each hit of placing a leech. He also attacks one enemy, has a 100% chance of placing a decreased speed, also has a... Uh, 80% chance of decreasing the turn meter by 30%. And he attacks all enemy, 100% chance of placing a decrease attack and a heal reduction. Speed in dungeons by 24%. Overall, a pretty interesting champion. Gruckus, I am going to go ahead and place into the B tier. He is just kind of an average support champion. He's kind of a faction war specialist in some ways, but overall nothing too, too special. We have Galkut, attacks one enemy two times, has a... 50% chance of placing a decreased defense for two turns. He attacks all enemies one by one in random order. Damage inflicted decreases by 25% after each hit, which is very interesting. This is the only guy whose kit is worded this way, but you know, it is what it is. Attacks all enemies, placing a bomb that detonates after two turns. The only thing really good about this guy is the fact that he has a crit rate aura and the fact that this doesn't have a place rate, it just simply places. 
Uh, like in terms of the books that you need. Galcut overall though, he actually just goes ahead and sits into the C tier. Nothing too, too special about him. Kind of just a generic damage dealer. And I've said many times that uh, damage dealers are pretty much a dime a dozen at this point. So, you know, there's not really any reason to swoon over them. We have Cage Breaker. Tax one enemy, 55% chance of placing a decreased defense for two turns. Attacks four times at random. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing a sleep. But this is a terrible skill, uh, especially the fact that it's only on a 50% pop rate. Because if you have two enemies alive and let's say two of your hits go and hit each enemy and it places a sleep, but then RNG procs and your second hits on each enemy don't place a sleep, this guy basically just placed a sleep, but now his second hit on each of those enemies is going to wake them up. So if he had a 50% chance on an AoE, or if he had a 50% chance on, you know, one enemy or anything really would be better than this, but the chances of this guy actually, you know, just waking people up after he puts the sleep on himself is way too high in my opinion. He attacks one enemy, or sorry, attacks all enemies, destroying each target's max HP by 50% of the damage inflicted, grants an extra turn if it kills an enemy, and this is on a four turn cooldown. Overall, Cage Breaker is actually going to go ahead and end up in the F tier. Uh, he's going to be one of the only two champions occupying the F tier here. Uh, go ahead, let me know down in the comments right now without cheating, don't skip to the end of the video, let me know who you think is going to be the second champion in the F tier, uh, and I'm curious to see that the comments might have to say about that. We have Occult Brawler, who's been in some of the promotionals and whatnot. Uh, Occult Brawler has a attack one enemy, 60% chance of placing a 5% poison. He has a small book here, which in all honesty I am not going to read, because this is just a bunch of BS that most people are going to turn off anyways. He has a passive where he places a small poison on himself for four turns at the start of each turn, and you might be like, mm, why is that? That's weird. Well, he also has a 70% chance of placing a big version of a poison debuff on a random enemy for four turns at the start of each turn. Uh, so it's kind of like a 50-50 there, whether or not he's going to place it or just poison himself. Because of this, though, he is actually a fantastic damage dealer for places like Dragon, uh, places like Clan Boss, of course, anywhere where you can place poisons on single targets. He could actually probably run fairly effectively in Scarab King. I just got a fantastic video idea, by the way. Thank you, Gary, for that. Uh, so he's actually going to go ahead and sit quite fairly, I would say, in the B tier. Fantastic damage dealer overall, like I said. Very, very happy to have him on my roster. Next up, we have Grush the Mangler. He is actually a free daily login, so he attacks one enemy. He has a 75% chance of placing a leech for two turns before attacking, so healing himself as well. Attacks all enemies. Has a 100% chance of placing a decreased attack or a decreased crit damage, so it'd be a bit better if it was both of those, especially considering it's on a four-turn cooldown. AoE, placing a 15% continuous heal on all allies for two turns. He's then going to place an additional small continuous heal on all allies for one turn if at least one enemy is hit with a crit. Not a bad skill there. Ally defense and faction crips by 30%. Very good aura. Overall, Grush, I'm very happy with him as well, and he's actually going to sit inside the A tier. One of the few champions that gets that weird middle ground between the C and the S tier. Wouldn't quite put him at S tier. He doesn't have the late game viability of some other champions, but overall this guy is still pretty good at carrying your account. We have Woosgar, who I think is the newest addition to the Augurn Tribes. I didn't even know this guy existed until I was making this video, so that was pretty cool. Attacks one enemy four times. Each hit heals the ally with the lowest HP by 2% of his max HP. Good base HP. Heals all allies by 10% of his HP. Places a counterattack on himself for two turns. You can see the synergy there. This is on a three turn cooldown. Places a reflect damage and a shield equal 20% of his HP on all allies for two turns. On a three turn cooldown, again, very good skill. Restores destroyed max HP whenever this champion heals themselves or an ally. The amount of HP restored is equal to 30% of the heal. Overall, actually a pretty, pretty good kit. Uh, this champion is actually going to end up in the A tier. Uh, I don't think anyone in the community really has enough experience with him to accurately grade him and, you know, where he's good and whatnot. So uh, going to give a little bit more time for playtesting there before I put him higher in the tier list. I, of course, uh, don't have him yet. I also don't have this fella, which is like the third champion that looks exactly like this. And in all honesty, if I keep working from home and making videos, my neck's going to look like that soon enough too. So I got to be careful. But he attacks one enemy, placing an increased attack on everybody if it's critical. 
He attacks one enemy, fully depletes the turn meter, fills his turn meter equal to the amount the target loses, and his most notable skill, he receives damage, then places an unkillable buff and a block debuffs buff on all allies for two turns. Damage received is equal to 5% max HP for each alive ally. This is on a five turn cooldown, but you get yourself two of these dudes and you're laughing yourself all the way to free clan boss rewards every single day, every single affinity. So this guy is in the S tier without question. Maneater is a fantastic champion. Towering Titan. He attacks one enemy, 55% chance of placing a decreased defense. He then attacks four times at random. First hit has a 100% chance of placing a provoke. Each of the other hits has a 60% chance of placing the provoke for one turn. Again, just so much better if this was on an AOE 75 or something like that, right? Because there's a chance that you just slam all of those hits into one person. He then places an increased defense on all allies for two turns, placing a continuous heal on himself as well as a shield on himself. And grants an extra turn. What an interesting champion. Passive will transfer 50% of the damage inflicted on Cage Breaker to him during battle. Aura is whatever. Honestly, this guy is pretty trash. For anyone who might have guessed him as the second one sitting in the F tier, you would be absolutely correct. They are the only two champions conquering the F tier in this video. So let me know what you think of that. We have Skrank. He attacks one enemy, 40% chance of placing a big version of Weaken. The chance increases to 75 if they're under an HP burn. Attacks one enemy two times, heals himself by 15% of his max HP on each hit. So that's insane, that's like a 30% heal. Placing an increased attack on himself for two turns if the target's under HP burn. And he attacks one enemy, 100% chance of placing an HP burn, fills his turn mute by 15% if he's hitting with a critical hit. And he increases his attack and crit damage by 5% every time an HP burn debuffs triggers on any enemy, stacks up to 25%. Very, very good potential there to stack some damage on him, he's also bringing debuffs and whatnot, so... This champion is going to go ahead and sit inside the B tier. He is a damage dealer that brings some additional skills with him. We have Prundar. Attacks one enemy, 45% chance of placing a decreased speed, 45% chance of placing a stun for one turn instead when counterattacking. He attacks all enemies, has a 60-75% chance of placing a provoke for one turn. So this is where I was talking about better version of a provoke. This is on a three turn cooldown. Then places an increased defense on himself. He places a Strengthen and a big version of Continuous Heal on all allies for two turns, which is fantastic. Then he receives 20% less damage from enemies under Provoke, and he has a 25, uh, that'd be 30, 35, 40, 45, 50% chance of counterattacking whenever an enemy under Provoke attacks him or an ally. So you pair him with another Provoker, he's going to be fantastic. Ally Defense of Doom Tower Battles. His A1, his passive synergy, he is going hard. So this guy is going to go ahead and sit in the B tier. Very good support champion there. Eurogrim is a champion that was kind of controversial because he actually got nerfed before his launch. Uh, he attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 45% chance of placing a 5% poison. He removes all debuffs from an ally, then heals them by 40% of their max HP on a three-turn cooldown. He then places two poison debuffs on all enemies for two turns, also placing a continuous heal for two turns on everybody on a four-turn cooldown and ally speed in all battles by 20%. Even after the nerf, I would go ahead and say that I'm going to place this guy into the S tier. Fantastic champion there, especially if you're looking to solo content. I would like to thank you guys all so, so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like down below, and I'll see you in the next video.